So hey everybody, in this session, we're gonna be talking a little bit about what it means to be a secular homeschooler or an inclusive homeschooler, and some of the reasons why you might want to seek out some of those kind of resources and how do you go about finding them here in the buckle of the Bible Belt. Um, <laughs> so today I have with me for this session, we have Amanda and Carol and Jordan, and they all have um, some resources and expertise and insights into this topic for us. So um, let's just jump right in and um, tell us a little bit about, you know, you know your, your journey into homeschooling and um, your, you know, interest in some non-religious materials. I think we should start with Carol. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, my name is Carol. I started South Carolina Secular Homeschooling back in 2013 as sort of just like I just wanted to throw it out into the universe and see what happened uh, because I didn't know any secular yeah. homeschoolers at the time. Um, I had moved from New Jersey to South Carolina. Um, and I didn't really understand religious homeschooling at all. Like I, I didn't realize what I was getting myself into completely. Like I knew it existed, but I didn't, I didn't really know what was going on. My kids um, were four and five at the time. Um, and I just, I needed to find some people and resources. So I started South Carolina Secular Homeschoolers within like a couple of months, we had 150 members Wow. And it just kept growing. So um, so I've just been sort of casually managing it since then. Um, I've always been a secular homeschooler because I didn't I didn't really think of education in terms of religion. Um, really, secular education is the norm in this country. So I didn't think it would be that hard to find resources and uh, materials. Um, so yeah, uh, so that's where I'm coming from. Um, we've been homeschooling since about 2010 officially. Um, I started researching it back when I was pregnant. Um, and probably even before that, uh, I get hyper focused on things. Um, and that was one of them. <laughs> so, uh, I used to work on school buses uh, and that led me down a whole uh, path of like alternatives to the whole public school system. Yeah. Um, For a long time, I think, um, I think that a lot of people never really realized there were um, people that were homes were homeschooling for other reasons besides mm -hmm. um, just religious reasons. And we have a whole workshop that's just about know your why, why are you homeschooling? Um, mm -hmm. And religion may play a part of it, but a lot of people are in it for a variety of other reasons that have, have nothing to do with that. And so, um, especially now, yeah, right. understanding all the, all the spectrum of those reasons can bring you to, um, you know, more of a secular and inclusive kind of a, a a group and community and helping people get connected in those kinds of ways matters to me. And so that's um, part of my passion is trying to help you find the group that, <laughs> that that's right for you and, you know, not have to pretend that you're something different than what you are. So, yeah. So how about you, Jordan? Tell us a little bit about you. <laughs> um, well, I have a very similar story. I decided to homeschool before I even had any kids. I myself was homeschooled, but I was very religiously homeschooled in a very religious program, really just curriculum and everything. And that's the one thing I knew I didn't want for my kids. I wanted all the science. I wanted everything available, not picking and choosing. So that's why I chose secular homeschooling. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> what about you, Amanda? Ah. Uh, I never thought I would homeschool because I had a career. Thank you very much. <laughs> but here we are. Um, so I've been homeschooling, I guess, seven years now or eight. Um, my son went to public school for kindergarten. Um, and in about the middle of the year, I 
tried to get him some um, some uh, exposure to some other math that wasn't kindergarten math because he was already doing like fourth grade level math. And when it took me nine weeks and three meetings to get him half an hour a week of enrichment <laughs> with first grade math, I thought, this is ridiculous. I'm not waiting another year and a half for the school system to catch up to noticing that my kid is going to need something different. And so I pulled him out and uh, my daughter hasn't gone at all. So, um, and as far as secular homeschooling, it's, it's really funny even the phrase to me because I am very much a very committed um, Christian and uh, that kind of integrates completely into my life, into every aspect of life, including school. So it's not that we do secular homeschool in the sense of we don't study religion or the Bible or all that, because we do, we'd study all of those things. But, um, but I realized pretty early on that I was not real keen on the Christian curriculum and resources um, because it was just, it was too limited. It was too dogmatic. It was too, probably lots of other words that we all know. And I just didn't, I wanted some more, I wanted more diversity and I wanted more variety for the kids. And so, um, and so really I began to not just not look at overtly Christian curriculum, but actually kind of stay away from it and just pick and choose my own things so that the kids were exposed to a lot of different um, ideas. It's always cracked me up that there are Christian books on arithmetic and I just don't really understand that because I, I think two plus two is probably the same exactly. whatever you yes. are. <laughs> I have a funny story about that. I'll tell you some other time. Okay. <laughs> okay. Good. So, yeah. So, yeah, you can come from all kinds of um, different, you know, reasons and backgrounds for um, trying to seek out more of a secular or, or inclusive, sometimes they call it, um, you know, kind of a group. And there are kind of some differences in meaning, I think, too. Um, you know, I think a lot of people come to it and think if I go to a secular group, I have to check my religion at the door and I'm not ever allowed to speak mm -hmm. about it. And it is true. There are some groups that are like that, that if you recommend any resource that has Christian content in it or even a Christian character in it, they delete it. They don't want it in there um, or talked about at all. Um but most of the groups, especially around here, I know Carol's group is labeled as a secular group, but um, but the policies about recommending various um, curriculums and, you know, resources isn't that uh, rigid. So I mentioned this before, but yeah, we, we welcome everyone. Um, we're inclusive in terms of our membership, but also, I am not super strict about recommending Chris, Christian curriculum. What I am strict about in my group is because it's it's secular homeschoolers um, is that if you recommend uh, religious materials of any kind, not just Christian, but of any kind of religion that you label them as such. Right. Um, I, I think other religions that aren't as prevalent in the United States anyway, um, they are used to labeling their curriculum as their religious, as their religion, if it is. Um, but Christians just kind of assume that everybody believes the same thing that they do here. Um, so I just want everybody to be clear about what they're, you know, what they're sharing and what they're recommending. Um, Honesty and advertising. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And, and I think a lot of people who will consider themselves as a secular homeschooler actually don't mind using re religious materials. They just want to go into it knowing, right. you know, whether they're, you know, going to, you know, pick and choose around some of those kinds of content in there. Right. So, um, and then inclusive, I think, just generally means that you don't have a statement of faith where... Um, some, I know some religious based, faith based groups do have a statement of faith that you have to join them and they still say, but we are inclusive, anyone can join, but you still have to sign this statement of faith. And so um, I, I think in, in, in my definition, that's not really an inclusive group, 
when you have to still sign the, their particular statement of faith. Um, for groups that are teaching your kids, though, I do think that that statement of faith faith is an important thing to know, just like labeling the curriculum and saying, we're going to use this, we recommend this curriculum and it has this, you know, faith, you know, in it. Um, so does, you know, co-ops and programs that are going to offer, you know, religious content in that kind of way. And that sort of is an important thing to sign off on, but for just, you know, a Facebook group or meeting you know, um, in the park, a play group or something, you wouldn't necessarily need to all say, well, we all have to agree on this exact statement of faith. We can play together and be just fine. Yeah. <laughs> find, find, find kids that your kids like and moms that you like, and it doesn't <laughs> have to all be about the faith um, perspective. No. So what do you think? Any of those things, um, you know, I, I think they're buzzwords, you know, so just understanding the vocabulary and what, you know, the kind of sometimes it can be like a loaded meaning behind it. If you've, you know, in, encountered that, if it's just me. <laughs> As someone who was a sort of an outsider who didn't really understand uh, a lot of that subtext, uh, it was really hard to navigate in the beginning because I came from a very different place. Um, not that people aren't Christian in, you know, the North, because uh, they are, we were, but um, it's not part of your everyday conversations necessarily. It, it's considered rude kind of to, um, to inquire about someone's faith because that's a personal relationship you have with God or whoever. Um, so it, yeah, that, that, those loaded meanings that you're talking about were a big deal for me when I first got here because I, I waded into situations that I had no idea what, what was going on half the time. <laughs> and statements of faith were actually one of the reasons that I started the, a secular group in the first place because I kept joining inclusive groups um, and being presented then with statements of faith that uh, they wanted me to sign. And I just, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do it on principle, no matter what it said, even, even if, if I, you agreed with it, I don't want to sign it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So I was just like, it's a big state, you know, <laughs> there's gotta be some other people around here. Yes. Well, here's a, here's a few of them anyway. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Not everyone wants the same thing. We like right. variety. Right. Yes. Yeah. And that was my thing in the beginning. It was just, it was, so, everybody was doing the same thing in the, in the circle that I was in. Everybody was, there were like two or three curriculum providers that everybody sort of depended on. And I was not impressed with any of them. Yeah. Um, I was using mostly like thrift store textbooks, yeah. you know, public same. school textbooks. Um, <laughs> And like stuff I bought at CVS or whatever. <laughs> right. right. Or the dollar section at uh, Target. Yeah. 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 Love yeah. Target. Um, so yeah, the, it's grown tremendously in the past 10 years. I can't even keep up with it. And my kids are getting to the point where they're about to graduate. Um, so I'm not really looking at a lot of curriculum, but I, when I do pay any attention to like elementary school curriculum, especially, uh, it's, there's so much more diversity yeah. and, um, yeah. just selection than there was yeah. when there I was started. There before. Yeah. 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 You know, what's funny about the, um, the more religious curriculum is I didn't go looking for it because I just wasn't just wasn't looking. And again, I never anticipated that I would homeschool. So it's not like I had done any research until we got started. But most of what I've seen has been um, uh, materials that other people have given me. So they're leftover boxes. Hey, I have all this leftover, you know, for the last four years, would you like to go through it? And I'm like, sure. Oh, look, it's math and it's science. And history and grammar. And then, so I, I pull the books that I think are going to be useful for my kids. And then I get to looking at them and I'm like, oh no, this is terrible. <laughs> I'm not going to do this. And so a lot of my exposure has been from people who came before me 
who have passed on things. And so I, again, some of it I keep, like you mentioned, Kim, some of it I keep and I just customize as needed. Some of them, you know, occasionally I'll run into things that are, that are good materials. So I'll use those. And then a lot of them I just pass on to other people because I'm not, I'm not keen on Christian perspective on mathematics because it just doesn't really make sense to me. So like, we'll just go with math and that yeah. that's a legitimate title of a book, by the way. She's yes, not just it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. So where that's do you start to find some of your resources? Where 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 are you collecting things and how do you evaluate um, whether or not it has the kind of religious content in it that is um, going to still be suitable for you um, and agree with your you know overall worldview or um, you know, something that you do want to discard. How do you go about evaluating, you know, those things where, I'll, you know, I'll start there. I, I think I, um, when I'm generous term, my curriculum choices as eclectic, <laughs> which is the diplomatic word for it. Um, but I, uh, just look, I spend a lot of, you know, I do kind of like Carol does. I do the thrift stores. I do the consignment stores. I do the leftovers I, or the hand-me-downs. I do the curriculum from things like the homeschool expo that SC Top does. I do um, a lot of things that I did in my own education. I'll bring, I'll bring those out. And of course, like everybody else, I make vast use of YouTube and Khan Academy and all those mm -hmm. sorts of things. Um, and so I'll just give an example. So I was at a friend's house and she, um, her kids, Carol, are about the same age as yours and she's homeschooled them all the way. And um, her, she's a friend with like 6,000 books in her house, literally. So she's a huge resource for me. And uh, so I was looking for some material on US history and she loaned me a couple of books and that was like primary documents. And I was teaching the kids about primary and secondary. And so I borrowed it and then I got home and began to look through it more, more, uh, with more details. And I thought, this is ridiculous. This is like the agenda behind this book is not even subtle, you know, but there's nowhere in the title. There's nowhere in any of the introductory material where it tells you you're going to get this particular perspective. It's just when you get into it that you see the perspective. And I, I don't think in, there's any one faith or ideology that's that uh, is not guilty of that probably but it was it was eye-opening for me and so I kind of made a note all right this particular publisher I'm going to be real careful about in the future first of all but then it was also um, and I'm getting slightly off topic but it was also a teaching moment for my kids especially my older one because I sat down with him and I said look at the things that are included in this book as primary documents on US history. Why do you think they included this one? Why do you think they didn't include that one? And so it became an opportunity to say for, for teaching some discernment and teaching some critical thinking and being able to say, when you get material that purports to be educational, you need to look through it and go, what is it they're trying to educate me on? What, what are they trying to teach me? And so it ended up being a really good, a really good teaching moment. And so that's what I, one of the things that I value so much about diversity of perspectives is it gives you, because you're exposed to things, it helps you learn how to think, which is huge to us. We're all about mm -hmm. critical thinking, how to think about the, th the messages that you're going to get from all different areas of life in all different arenas. So. I just want to point out that that's true from all sides. Um, a lot of the secular materials that I use have a bias that oh, yeah. is yeah. super clear to me. Right. Um, we did Howard Zinn's A People's History of the United States um, in our history co-op uh, for the high schoolers this year. And I don't know if any of you have ever heard of it or mm -hmm. any of the listeners have ever heard of it, but um, it's a very particular point of view. He yeah. tells the history of the United States from a very particular point of view, and he's not necessarily wrong. He is representing facts, 
but he's representing them in a way that makes you think certain things good because right. that that's what he's trying to do right. um so it was it was an interesting exercise coming from my perspective which is very different than the you know the christian homeschool perspective uh -huh. uh, certainly and very different from even the mainstream history teacher perspective mm -hmm. um but i had to keep stopping and being like i need you all to understand that this is for, and that's something that I've always done anyway. Like I need you to understand who wrote this. I need you right. to understand where you know where this is coming from and why you're being taught this. Um, but yeah, I had to I had to keep stopping in the text and being like, I just want you to know. <laughs> you presented that as if it was something that like everyone believed, and it's that this is just his belief, you know. Right. So right. Um, right. But that's a valuable skill to learn, right? Yeah. So it's it's a lot of work though to personally evaluate and go through things. Yeah. You know, yeah. yourself. Are there any resources that you trust that have done some of that pre-evaluation for you? I think that's why a lot of people just default and say, I'm looking for a Christian perspective, because they want somebody who's already kind of done some of that pre-thinking for them. I mean, we have to save time somewhere. So <laughs> we have to take somebody's advice. Um, so there's a, a website called secularhomeschoolers.com that maintains a database of secular materials or all materials kind of, and they tell you what degree of secular they might be. Um, they don't, they don't have overtly religious materials, but they, um, they do have some neutral stuff on there. Uh, so they evaluate a lot of that. I read a lot of bloggers and their Facebook groups have just, I, I don't know what I would have done without Facebook groups as a homeschooler. And Facebook is a weird machine that we're all a part of. And I agree with all of the criticism that Facebook gets. And yet, like I, if I didn't have Facebook when I moved to South Carolina, I wouldn't know anyone or how to do anything. So, oh, we lost Jordan. Uh -oh. <laughs> I hope she that. Um, but yeah, so Facebook groups are invaluable. There are a bunch of secular homeschooling Facebook groups uh, nationwide and worldwide. Um, some there's of them. Called, called, there's, I'm there's sorry. Called, I'm sorry. There's one called Fresh. Um, free resources, something secular homeschool. I don't remember what the E stands for, but and I don't think I'm the, even a part of that one. Yeah, it's just uh, yeah. To your point, that there's a lot of them. A yeah. lot of them. Yeah, Weird. yeah. Times have definitely changed where you don't you, you can find real genuine community online and um, you know make connections and meaningful um, relationships that way. Um, and and so again though you still have to find the right kind of group even though it says secular um there there are you know different you know there are different of flavors of everything and i uh, wish yes, yeah. more people understood that like because yeah. christianity is such a spectrum too yes. right and a lot of people christian and and non-christian don't understand that like right it's a buzzword that's a, that that makes us think that we all agree, and mm -hmm. there's lots that we don't agree. <laughs> we don't agree on under that. Yeah, um, no group is a monolith that all yeah. you know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like like we're all Americans, so therefore we all agree. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Clearly not. Clearly not. <laughs> we're all homeschoolers, therefore we all agree. No, no. <laughs> yeah, I can't even get four people in my household to agree on most things. So. Right. <laughs> Right. right, right. So, but this finding is why that, my family ends up watching five different movies at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. but finding that right, you know, little group that that you trust their advice and their feedback, and you don't, you know, feel like you're a misfit in their group, then you know, it, there's there's bunches of them out there to try. So, and we do encourage finding that community and that you know safe place where you can ask your questions and get um, some valuable feedback that way. So, yeah, I, um, my first, it's actually my second, um, piece of advice that I give everybody is to find a homeschool family. Uh, because I, I know that 
it's been invaluable to me. And my family is, is my homeschool family is pretty diverse. We, I have people from all walks of life that give me valuable information every single day. Um, my first piece of advice is relax. It's fine. But, uh, yeah. my second piece of advice is always like, find your people, go out there, tell everybody who you are and what, you know, what you need and the people will find you like, yeah. just, it's okay to say it out loud. It's, you know, right. right. Yep. Agreed. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what my blog is about. You know, it's called the connection because I, I think that connections are what are, matter. Um, so connecting to resources, connecting to the groups and the community that, you know, fits you and helps you to succeed in this process. So I'm right there with you on that one. <laughs> Same. Yeah. So, so do you have any other words of wisdom before we wrap this up? Hmm. <laughs> We've covered it all. How about that? And we yeah. lost Jordan, so we can't ask her <laughs> about how, where she finds resources and, and information and know that she can trust. Um, I, 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 yeah, I do include as, that same thing on my blog too. When I list resources, I say whether it's secular or religious right. content in there. So it does cool. help to yeah, be helpful. Yeah. Um, I think as far as advice, uh, it just be open to all, you know, yeah. everything. Just just keep yourself open to information and um, you know, be be discerning, but but be right. open to you know, because it'll come from unexpected places constantly. Yeah. Yep. It's, it's hardly ever where you're looking for it. Yeah. Right. Um, and I know another word that we've used a lot in this session is diversity and including people who do think different than you that have different backgrounds than you, um, you know, and understanding even if they come with the same buzzwords, there there is diversity in there. Um, that you're going to have different perspectives and different, you know, reasons why you're doing this and different goals in mind and, you know, kind of, you know, using, using that to inspire you and into doing things maybe different than you had thought of before. So yeah, that diversity, you know, just because I think it doesn't mean it's the right way. So being open to the other people's ideas, which is what I love so much about an inclusive kind of a community. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I love that, you know, I'm trying to teach the kids um, the critical thinking because I want them to be critical thinkers and to be, um, to bec become adults who love to learn and know how to learn and to be kind. Like those are our, those are my four goals for the kids. Not that they get into a great college, but that they grow up to be kind critical thinkers who love learning. Um, and I think if we can do that, then they're, they're well on their way. And I love the bringing in diversity of perspectives gives us more potential for empathy, because when we hear other sides and other ideas, um, then it, it, it grows your capacity to empathize with others, which creates kindness. And then a diversity also, um, if you can, if you can instill some humility in yourself, then diversity gives you the opportunity to say, "Hey, maybe I, maybe I'm wrong about something. What a novel idea! Maybe I should grow up in my thinking. Maybe I should change my thinking. Maybe I should just adapt it here, and and not adapt it here. You know." And so it just gives a the diverse perspectives give an opportunity for, for humility and for empathy, as well as for the opportunity to learn how to discern between things on a continuum, you know, um, and where, what things are really super clearly biased and what things maybe aren't and, you know, j just to determine where you're going to fall and how you're going to think. So I like diversity for those for those reasons, because it it's, and then, you know, my own faith-based reason is when I look around and see that the world is extraordinarily diverse, then I think that's probably a good thing. And so I want 
I want the kids exposed to to different things. So. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, well, thank you so much for coming today and talking to us about these kind of issues that affect us as homeschoolers. And I hope that it inspires and encourages some people to find um, their group and their community. Um, and if they don't have one, <laughs> um, maybe they can jump into the secular homeschool community and see what see what they can find there um, and be included in that kind of way. So. Um, I just really appreciate you participating with us and we will see everyone in the next session. Thanks, Kim.